Hello everyone. Happy more happy Memorial Day. Welcome back to Drunk Camera Reviews. Today we have the Fuji X100F on the chopping block. Now Fuji's made quite a stir with their X100 series. I've used the X100T in the past. Loved it. The X100F, it's better, but it's slightly better. There are some things that I don't like about it, but there's a lot of things that I do like about it. I'm going to tell you about those today. Now to start off, the Fuji X100F is a 24 megapixel APS-C X-Trans 3 sensor. It's not the X-Trans 2, they finally bumped it up. It's a 23mm f2 lens, which equates to about a 35mm f2. I know people will fight about the aperture, like, oh, it's not really an f2, but... Whatever, it says F2. And that can be manually adjusted right here, which is all, the whole thing about the X100F is, it really goes back to the old school style of everything is right there, all of your dials are right here. You can set them all to app to automatic, if you really wanted to. You can set it to auto aperture, auto shutter, auto ISO, and just let it do whatever the hell it wants. I usually like to keep it at f2.8 to f4. The reason for that is f2 is kind of soft. It's not as sharp as a lot of the other Fuji interchangeable lenses. Like the, um, I know they, I think they do make a 23 millimeter f2 uh, for the X-T2 and the X-Pro2 and the X-T20, I think that's what it's called. But this one is sort of, it's all about the old school style. I guess that's what you would say. Now the X100F has kind of this hybrid optical and electronic viewfinder. You can look straight through it just fine. There's nothing, there's nothing blocking it. But when you do turn it on, you can flip this little lever right here and it'll close because now it's showing an electronic viewfinder in the actual viewfinder. It's kind of interesting. But if you just wanted to keep it normal, you can do that. And it also has the eye sensor. So as soon as you put your eye close, it'll change. It changes pretty quick. Um, you can also set it where, on the display, you can set it where it just shows you information on the back screen. And it's only for using the optical or electronic viewfinder, which I usually kept it in that that mode um, because I found that it was kind of slow to switch. When I would put the camera quickly up to my eye, it would, it sometimes wouldn't be quick enough to get the shot I wanted, which kind of bummed me out, but more on that later. Now, as you can see, around the entire camera, you've got on and off switch, You've got your shutter speed, but then you also have your aperture, not aperture, ISO. You've got your ISO dial here, which a lot of people don't like. They would rather have a separate ISO dial, like change something, give it like a scroll wheel, or even this, change that to ISO. But a lot of people don't like that. I just set it to auto auto ISO and let it go. Then you have your aperture control ring here. And then you have another control ring in front of that. I've never used this. I have no idea what what it actually does. So, I mean, if I, like, I really don't care, but you might care. And then on the front, you have another control wheel. Don't really know what this changes. And here, this switches the, like if you're in, um, I do believe if you're in manual focus mode and you push it this way, a little window will pop up right there, which will give you a magnified view of what you're seeing, usually wherever your focus point is, which you can adjust via this little joystick right here. Which, I do love the joystick, but I found too many times when I've put this in my camera bag and I pull it back out, or even if I just have it by my side or even like just hanging around my neck, it'll adjust the focus point accidentally. It's very sensitive. So I, I would like slightly stiffer uh, joystick, but that's just me. Now on the side here, you've got a mini or is it a micro HDMI? It's an HDMI port. 
and then you have a USB port and also a headphone jack. I never used the headphone jack, but I really loved having the USB port because this can charge over USB. Now, when you're out, I've actually, this thing has amazing battery life. I, I've been out shooting all day with it, usually like eight hours, and it survived on a single battery, which is awesome. I love it, but if I ever needed that little bit of extra juice, I have an external battery pack that I usually use to charge my iPhone. Um, it'll charge right off of that. So if I sat down for lunch and I wasn't gonna use it, plugged it in, gave it a little, like a few more, like maybe 10, 15 more percent battery, it's great. And on the other side, you have your focus modes. You have single focus, which will just focus, like every time you pull the shutter or push the shutter button, it'll focus. And you have your continuous, which you hold the shutter button and it will focus continuously. And then you have your manual focus. Now, with manual focus, I do believe that you can focus via this ring right here. Now, if you look in this window right here, I have it where it's actually in um, optical viewfinder mode. And while you're in manual focus, you can push this and a little window will pop up. And that window will show you a magnified view of what you're actually looking at, which is pretty convenient. And it pops up super quick. And then you, or then you can just do the full thing. It's just fun to like mess with it. But you're basically just gonna, yeah. I don't wanna keep messing with it. But yeah. Now, the one thing yeah, and see, it actually will give you a, a, a distance meter. And I have it set to meters because that's what everything else is set for, which is actually pretty convenient. And it will focus pretty damn close. It actually does a pretty good macro mode, which it will get pretty dang close to everything, which is nice. Now the one thing that Fuji, the one thing that Fuji cameras are really known for is their film simulation. Now Fuji puts a lot of work into their film simulations and a lot of people agree that Fuji has some of the best straight out of camera JPEGs on the market. I mean, some people like Nikon a little more, but Fuji it's very, they're their old school film simulations are pretty much on point. Now, you go into your menu, and then there's, you got Provia, Velvia, Astia, Classic Chrome. Their Classic Chrome was very popular in the X100T, and basically all the, well, really all the X-Series. That was a very, very popular. And then you got your Pro Neg High and Standard. <laughs> okay, stop licking yourself. Stop it. I completely missed. Stop it. Stop licking yourself. It sounds gross. But the big, big, film simulation that kind of they were really touting was Across. Across, Across, I I don't know, but it's their black and white film simulation. They also have monochrome, but Across is kind of their, it's, it's Fuji's, one of Fuji's best black and white films, in my opinion. I love it. Now, in that, they also have different filters, like digital filters, yellow, red, and green. Now, I've usually only used red, just because, I mean, that's good for portraits and such, but you can really, you can really mix it up with it, and it's, it's pretty nice. Now, a lot of people have been touting the new X-Trans 3 sensor, and, well, as like a, a much improved, it's a much needed improvement on the X-Trans 2 16 megapixel sensor. I mean, you get, how many more megapixels is that? Eight? Is it eight? I can't do math. Yeah. Eight. eight, yeah, eight megapixel improvement. <laughs> but one of the nice things about Fuji, oh, that's nice, uh, ah, now Fuji and their x sensors is their noise, their ISO noise is a lot smoother, or it's a lot, not so much smoother, but rel it's similar to 
actual film grain in the way that it's laid out. It's very much randomized instead of like a Bayer sensor where all the pixels are exactly the same in the exact same position in just a grid. You know, the X-Trans sensor is laid out a little bit differently. I'll probably, maybe I'll find a picture. Maybe get myself to do that much work. Oh God. Now what I really want to talk about when talking about the X100F is how I use it, how I did use it, because it's going back tomorrow, because I rented this one for this trip. Um, now I used it mainly as a street photography camera. I never shot any portraits, but well I did shoot a few. Um, they turned out okay, I mean, they weren't the best. Um, but I enjoyed using it just as a on the fly pick up and just I can hip fire with it. Um, but when I was using it, I found that setting it to auto shutter, auto ISO, and had it stay above one two hundredth of a second, and I can set the aperture to whatever I want. Oh, yeah, also, another good thing about this camera, it has a built in three stop ND filter, which came incredibly uh, handy when shooting in bright sunlight, but also having the ability to set one of the many custom function buttons to automatically turn on or turn, not automatically, but just pressing that button would turn on or off the ND filter. So go outside, turn on the filter, go inside, turn it off. Simple as that. That was mainly because the base ISO was 200, not 100, which is kind of strange, but eh, it worked. Now I'll tell you now, um, using this camera in very dark settings worked pretty well. I was good up till around 12,800 ISO. I was seeing pretty decent photos, but I'll have to really dig into the raw files to see how I can pull those or how much I can push those. Um, but yeah, I mainly kept it with those settings. Um, I set my focus to zone focusing, which isn't like setting the aperture and then just focusing like that. Um, or focusing by a uh, scale, but you have with this uh, new focus system, there is zone focus, single point focus, and wide tracking focus. Now, I tried, I mean, single point works very well. It's just one, you get one little dot in the center, and that's what it's going to focus on. <clears throat> Ugh. But I found that doing the zone focus where it just put a box in the center and you could actually move that box around to wherever you wanted. That was the issue I was having with the joystick where it would move where I didn't want. Um, what was I talking about again? But yes, the, the zone focus worked well. Um, the wide and tracking, I used that once just to test it out. Um, it missed a lot. So didn't really want to use it for quick quick shots that I wanted to do. I figured that just the sticking all in the center, that's where I was aiming, and most of the time it worked. Now is this camera for everyone? Probably not. Most people won't enjoy paying $1,200 for a point and shoot camera. I mean, that's money you could buy a modest DSLR with a few lenses, and this is stuck with a 35 millimeter equivalent with no zoom. So it kind of pushes people's buttons a little bit but who knows i tried the flash out for a little bit didn't like how it looked so i turned that off immediately so did i enjoy using this camera for a week yeah i think i did it was definitely a different it was a nicer experience than when i rented the x100t which was a good camera at the time but this one has shown much improvement over that which is awesome. So so I hope you enjoyed this episode of Drunk Camera Reviews. If you'd like to see, see other cameras um, that I have reviewed, you can just check them out on my channel. If you would like to suggest a camera for me to review, you can leave a comment down below. If you would like to send me a camera, I've gotten a few, few cameras sent in, um, shoot me an email. I'll leave my email in the description down below. So until next time, have a good week.